This is with equations of circles. So we're going to start off here with a circle and kind of play around with it. So here I've got a circle whose center is at 0, 0. And I'm just going to pick some random point here on the uh, circle. And I will just name it x sub 1, y sub 1. It's a specific point. It's right there, x sub 1, y sub 1. Let's kind of look at that. Hmm. Well, let me play with that point a little bit. If I come down to here, I can see that this distance is the distance from 0, which is the same as the x-coordinate, or that distance is x plus x, x sub 1. And if I take the distance over here, that's going to be the same as the vertical distance from the origin, so that's going to be y sub 1. Or also here on this side, the distance is y sub 1. I'm going to make that a triangle. I'm going to make a radius. There is the distance from my handy dandy point to the origin and that's kind of the definition of a radius it's the distance from the center to the uh, circle so that's the radius I'm wondering if there's any kind of a relationship I could see there I wonder if you know that Greek guy you know Pythagoras could help us with the relationship between x1 y1 and r you know I think he could a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Some of the sides of a right triangle is equal to square the hypotenuse. Indeed, it is. So, x sub 1 squared plus y sub 1 squared is indeed equal to r squared. Wow, who'd have thunk it? That's cool. But, you know, I'm a little suspect. I think maybe that worked just because I was writing with red ink. If I had been writing with another color of ink, I think it may not have happened. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write with blue ink and also I'm going to make it in a different place because in a different place, you know, it might be different. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick this point right here and I'm going to call it conveniently x sub 2, y sub 2. That's my point. Okay. I'm going to draw my radius and I'm just real sure that this radius is the same as that radius so I'm going to go ahead and mark it with the same letter R because, you know, it's the radius of the same circle. How far out is this? Okay, the coordinate, the x coordinate is x2, x sub 2. So how far is it from the origin? Indeed, it is x sub 2 from the origin. And again, with the y value, this is y sub 2. And that's right across from it, parallel, all that kind of stuff, same distance y sub 2. And I drew it as perpendicular, so it's perpendicular, so it's a right triangle. And so I'm thinking that the sum of the squares of this particular blue right triangle is indeed equal to the square of the radius, the third side, the hypotenuse of this particular right triangle. Does it work? x sub 2 squared plus y sub 2 squared Yes, indeed, it is equal to r squared, the radius squared. Hmm. Well, Pythagoras did not fail me. Look here. What have I got? I've got that this blue point over here is equal to the same thing as this red point over here. Square the coordinates, add them. I'm going to get this number that's r squared. Down here with the blue one, square the coordinates, add them. I'm going to get the same number, even though it's blue. Same number here. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking if I pick this point right here, it'll work. It'll be the same thing. And here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. At every one of these infinite points of the circle, it'll be the same relationship. The square, the sum of the squares of the coordinates will equal the square of the radius. I wonder why that is. You know, I'm thinking it's probably because the circle is round. Yeah. The way the circle is drawn makes this true. Hopefully you can see that. Hmm. I'm a little suspicious. I'm thinking maybe 
I, I, you know, this is good. This is good. And, you know, this is like really handy because any circle that's here at the origin, I can do that because it worked because I could just use the coordinates as my two legs of my right triangle. That's really handy. And, and I would really kind of like it if I could also do that even when it is, you know, not at the origin. So there's a circle that's not at the origin. Let's see what I can do with that. Okay, well, well it, where is the origin? Okay, the origin looks like it's about, uh, excuse me, where is the center? There's the center approximately. You know, a lot of people who like who work with circles like to call the center HK. So, hey, who am I to fuss? I'm going to call mine HK as well. Okay. Well, you remember last time I just picked a point on the circle. And then I drew some triangles. Well, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to pick a point. That's going to be my point. It's going to represent any point on the circle. And I'm just going to call it XY. I'm looking at this. I remember, I remember how really handy it was when all I had to do was use the coordinates and I could figure this out. Hmm. I would like to be able to just use the coordinates of this point to be able to figure this out. Let's see. Wait. In this class, not that long ago, in the recent past, we did some things when we did transformations. And we had dilations, and dilations were like super simple when the center of origin was at the center of dilation was at the origin. I wonder what would happen if we did that here. Before we moved it back and down, or over and down, or over and up, we moved it to the origin. However you got there, however you get there, and then we could do all this stuff easy. <coughs> Excuse me. I bet that'd work here. How am I gonna do that? Okay. Well, HK, hmm, so H, that's the X value, and that's right there, and this distance right here is H. How far to the, away from the origin is it? And this value right here is the Y value, and that value is K. So what has to happen to get this this little point here that's in the center down over here to the origin? Not that big of a deal. I gotta go over H units and and down or up to be in this case down K units. Remember our translations? How are we gonna do that? Well, it's easy peasy. We can write it as X minus H Y minus K. So that will be the coordinates of any point that we move it. Because remember, we're in froggy days. Because remember froggy days. And we have froggy days. And here we got froggy. And we wanted to move him. And we just moved his toe. We slide it over. Slide it down. We notice that froggy comes with froggy's toe. So you start here. Over and down. Indeed. Same deal with this. If we slide... One point, we're going to slide it all. Translations, this translation will then represent any point on the circle. We can draw our triangles like we drew them before. And when we do, what we're going to come up with is this. It's going to be X minus H, quantity squared, plus Y minus K, quantity squared, equals the radius squared just like we did it before. Again, we translate to the origin to make it easy so that the coordinates we have can be used to use the Pythagorean theorem. Works very nicely. And it just so happens that this is indeed the standard form of the circle. So you should like write that down in your cipher. Using some of this, Okay, I'll do a couple of them here for an example. This one's easy. Remember, our standard form of the circle is going to be X minus H, Y minus K. So when we look at this one, we'll see, excuse me, 
we'll see that the center is at 0, 0, and the radius is 2. So the equation of this circle is x minus 0 squared plus quantity squared plus y minus 0 quantity squared equals 2 squared, or x squared minus, uh, excuse me, x squared plus y squared equals 4. You look at another one. How about this one right here? The center is at negative 3, negative 3. Now, you've got your handy dandy formula here. And notice in your handy dandy formula that the standard formula is with a minus. You encountered this minus phenomenon earlier with uh, point slope form. And you remember from point slope form that when you do it, you've got to change all the signs to arrange for it being minus to minus or plus to minus and all that kind of stuff. So remember that that's what the standard form looks like. So the equation of this circle then will be x plus x minus a minus 3, x plus 3, and then y minus a negative 3, or x plus 3. So it'll be um, x plus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared equals uh, 9 squared, which is 81. Play with a few of these. Look at some of them. Make sure that you can do them. Also, these down here at the bottom where you have the center and the radius, make sure you can write equations. Pause it a moment, and then I'll give you the answers. Here's the answers. Make sure that you're doing them correctly. So how are we going to write an equation of a circle from a graph? Here's a graph. Okay, remember, we need the coordinates of the center. Got that. And we need the radius. Don't got that. But we need to know, so we need to know the distance from the center to a point on the circle. And we do have those, so we can do it from there. Remember, you can't just say, oh, hey, it looks like it's it right there. You know, you can't count that. It looks like it's even. You can't count a cross like this because you don't know for sure that it goes exactly through those crosshairs. What you do know is that it's exactly on this point. So you can use the points that are given big dots because of the ones that are exact, and those are the ones you can use. So there's a couple of ways to do this. First off, the, the uh, default way, you're going to have to use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem, whichever one you like, to find the distance from here. So you would use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. If you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to be drawing a triangle, and that'll be fine. And here's how that would work out. However, on this particular one, if you notice, it's 4 over, 3 up. This is a Pythagorean triple. 4, 3, that must be 5. You find that out when you get the work the distance formula here. Find that the radius is 5. Then substitute in to get your standard form of your circle. And here is the equation of the circle. Let's work a few of these for practice. Here, work both of these and make sure that you can do them, and I'll show you the answers. So pause it if you need to. Here's the answer to 3. And here's the answer to 4. Again, we're using the standard form of the circle each time. Here's the standard form of the circle. So now what are we going to do just to draw a circle, just to graph a circle? Okay, well, we'll remember our standard form. So I know uh, that's the standard form, so that must have been x plus minus 0. And that must have been y minus 0 since it's not there. So the center is at 0, 0. Then I'm going to the radius is the square root of 16, which is 4. 
out. For class, if you've got a compass, it's great. If you have a handy dandy, you know, mug, you can draw around that too. <laughs> okay. But what you need to do, start where start at your center and just count left and right four, up and down four, because that's the radius. And then either take a compass if you've got one. Oops, that was only three. And draw the best you can to make a circle. And pretty good is good enough. So that's what that one will look like. Here. Here's our, our circle in standard form. And now we're going to draw it. Sorry. Okay. So the, the center is at 2-4. And the diameter, excuse me, the radius is the square root of 36. So I'll count 6. And up and down. And then just do my best. Hopefully you'll do a little bit better than I did that time. So again, that's what this circle looks like. I mean, you know, if it were actually round. Here's another one. Remember that pesky little thing about the um, formula having negatives in it, the standard form? So reminder, this had to have been x minus a negative 5. So the x value here is negative 5. The y value is not there, so it was y minus 0. So the center is here at negative 5, 0. The radius is the square root of 49, which is 7. So we'll draw that. Did I do that right? And then we just kind of do our best. I do better when I turn the page. Don't know about you. I still didn't do wonderful. But that'll do it. If you don't have a compass handy, I'm good with that. If you get the four compass points there and just go to it. One of the uses of circles is calculating or finding the epicenter of an earthquake. This is the way um, GPS positioning also works. So read the problem here. Notice that the epicenter of the earthquake is seven miles from A. Okay, seven miles from. That's just kind of the definition of a radius. Uh, it's the same distance from a point in space, it's the same distance from it. It's seven miles for a, from A that makes this circle. The uh, uh, epicenter, excuse me, the epicenter is four miles away from the seismograph at station B, a four mile radius, and five miles away from the um, seismographic station at um, C. So when you look at this, when you have any two circles, I mean, unless they're just perfect touching, they're going to touch in two places. A and B intersect here and here. A and C intersect here and here. B and C intersect at these two points. All three of them intersect at this one point. That's where the earthquake was. That's the epicenter of the earthquake. Okay, we're going to stop for the moment, and so you'll need to get to part two. Because my copies are ready, I better go get them.